Hi, I'm Chef Keith Snow. Welcome to my kitchen. Today, one of my all-time favorite recipes, bolognese, which is a classic Italian meat sauce. And it's very thick and rich. It's got some wine in it, usually a little milk or cream, lots of fresh herbs, and typically three different types of meat, ground pork, ground beef, and ground veal. Today, I'm using two only. I've got some chuck steak, and I've got some Boston butt, which is the shoulder of the pig. And I'm actually gonna grind my own meat today. This is my Cuisinart stand mixer, and it's equipped with a meat grinding attachment that the good folks there sent me. I've already used this to make burgers, and it works fabulous. And there is no way to guarantee that your meat is absolutely fresh other than to grind it yourself. First thing, we'll take our pusher out of the top here, and let's pay a little attention to this pork. And you'll notice that this has quite a bit of marbling and fat, and that's a good thing. It also has a bone that we want to simply just remove. And we'll just set this aside. Now, in order to grind meat, you want to have sort of long, maybe two inch pieces. And trust me, most stand mixers will come with an attachment like this, or it's available for most stand mixers, and it's very, actually inexpensive and very tasty to grind your own meat. So the first thing we'll do is set our mixer to the number three speed and turn it on. And now we will drop our meat in. And if all goes well, it should come out this end. And as you can see, it doesn't take a lot of effort. Okay, now if you were to do this in your own home, what you would want to do before you took this apart is take a few pieces of bread, just plain old, you know, sandwich bread, put it in there and push it and run it through because it helps to clean off the parts. And then of course, this would need to be sanitized and personally I would do that in very hot soapy water and bleach because I want to make sure that it's clean. So we are ready to proceed with our recipe. Okay, now to the stove portion of our bolognese sauce. The first thing we want to do is use a good, heavy-duty Dutch oven. You've heard me say this a hundred times, but this is going to slow cook for a little while. We want to make sure we've got a good pot. What we need to do to start out is take some really good quality extra virgin olive oil and put that in our Dutch oven. And now we're going to add what is called in French cuisine merpois. Merpois is celery, carrot, and onion. It's three different ingredients. Makes up merpois in Latin cooking or even in Italian cooking, they may call it sofrito. And sofrito is a little different because they would add tomatoes and bell peppers. Everyone has a different sofrito. But merpois is always going to be celery, carrot, and onion. Unless you're down in New Orleans where sometimes they'll call it the trinity and they'll substitute bell pepper for the carrot. So here we go. We'll add these ingredients right in. This is a half a cup of diced carrot, celery, and now onion. Just throw it right in there. We want to get this sauteing a bit. We'll season it with some kosher salt, black pepper, and the idea of this recipe is that you're using high quality ingredients because if you skimp on the meat or if you skimp and don't use these beautiful fresh herbs like this or if you use a red wine that's a little cheap, it will really affect the finished dish. And this is a thick meat sauce. It's not a loose runny meat sauce. It's very thick and usually they serve it over a wide pasta like a pappardelle, which is a wide noodle or even you could use it as a lasagna filling. But now we want to get our merpois sort of going like this. I've got two cloves of garlic right here that are just chopped up. We're going to add those right in. And we're going to talk now for a minute about the tomatoes I'm going to use. These are canned tomatoes. They're imported from Italy and they're called San Marzano. And this is a very important designation. And I'm going to hold this very still for my cameraman to look at. There is an insignia here. And this 
is put on here by an authority in Italy that certifies that these are actually grown in the region and in the manner that San Marzano tomatoes are grown. And usually it's in a very, very rich volcanic soil with, it's, also, it's got some clay in it as well, and it's uh, outside of the Naples region. And San Marzano plum tomatoes are the best tomatoes in the world, particularly for this recipe. And what's unique about them is they're a very long, meaty plum tomato. They don't have a ton of seeds and juice in them, so they're perfect for sauce. But make sure that you see that insignia because oftentimes manufacturers will say San Marzano style or they'll put other verbiage in there and they're trying to kind of cheat you. So make sure you see that. And we're going to open these up. And it's perfectly fine to make this sauce with canned tomatoes. In fact, I would never make it without canned tomatoes because fresh tomatoes just have much too much liquid in them. And we're going to add all of this to this pot in a few seconds. Another trick I'm going to show you is this. This is the rind from a spent piece of Parmigiano Reggiano. In other words, I've used all that I could get off of that. So instead of throwing the rind out, the whole thing is edible. You put it into this pot and it simmers with the meat and the tomatoes and the herbs and really adds a special something to the sauce. So we'll take that, throw it right in. And now we're going to grab our fresh herbs. These are right out of my own garden. And we have two of them, thyme, and then we have oregano. And we'll throw it in, stems and all. And this is one dish where I would add fresh herbs at the beginning. Usually I'll tell you to add fresh herbs at the end of a dish to preserve their flavor. But this is kind of a, a meaty dish that's sort of slow cooked. And unlike the harvest eating tomato sauce that's on the website, this dish, it needs probably 35 or 40 minutes to get it fully cooked. So now that our vegetables are starting to show a little color, I'm gonna now add our beautiful ground meat. And it's equal amounts of beef and ground pork. And I'll stir this through. And this is going to add, obviously, meatiness, but also some great fat from the beef. And we'll also add just a touch more olive oil. And we're going to season this. We just added a lot of volume to the pot, so we want to re-season it. Salt and pepper. And now this needs to cook for a few minutes. All right, it's cooked for a few minutes and it's ready to go. What we need to do now is deglaze with a little nice quality red wine. Don't be shy. Probably add at least a quarter of a cup of red wine. And then we're gonna rub around like we usually do when we're deglazing to scrape up any of the brown bits on the bottom. Nice, really great flavor. And at this point, we will add our entire can of plum tomatoes, San Marzano plum tomatoes. And I am going, going to fish one out to show you how long and thin and skinny they are. They're beautiful tomatoes, and these will make an excellent sauce. And if you notice and you look in here, there is not, it's not overflowing with tomato sauce, so to speak, and a little meat. It's the opposite. It's a lot of meat. It's a very thick sauce. It's not runny. It won't form like a pool on your plate. It's just thick, meaty, and gorgeous. So very simple. We added the tomatoes and the wine. We need to re-season it. Every time you add something that you know, has significant weight to your pot, if you don't re-season it, it will be bland. And I'm kind of taking my spoon and sort of breaking down these tomatoes after they cook in here for 35 or 40 minutes, which is all it will take. They will break down and become part of this amazing ragu. So the last thing we'll do now is take a little bit of heavy cream. You could use milk or you could omit this. And what this does is kind of cut down on the acidity, but it's very classic and bolognese. And we'll add just about a quarter of a cup. And that's organic cream. We'll stir that through. And now we're going to put a cover on this and let all the flavors 
marry together and make an unbelievable sauce. So we'll see you back here in a few minutes. Okay, our bolognese sauce is done. I let it simmer down for 35 to 40 minutes. And what I'm looking for is a very thick consistency like this. I didn't want it to be watery. In fact, after I let it come up to a boil, I slightly turned the lid of the pot ajar so some of the steam would evaporate out and the flavors would concentrate. Again, you're looking for a very thick ragu like this and you want to be careful that it doesn't evaporate and go dry on you, so, so watch it. But it was about 35 to 40 minutes. Now we have some beautiful pasta here that's very al dente and these little shells are perfect for catching nice chunks of sauce. So let me show you how I would serve it. And you can see this is not watery. This is a thick, beautiful, what the Italians would call ragu. And that's how I would serve it. And I would garnish it with thyme, which was the major flavor in there. We had some oregano, but you can really smell the thyme. So I would put some thyme on the plate. And of course, I'd finish it with Parmigiano Reggiano. And I would serve this with an Italian red wine. A Chianti would be perfect. And the last step I'll do is a little twist of black pepper, and then of course some extra virgin olive oil, raw right on top. Just like that. And there you have the classic bolognese sauce, delicious. I hope you love this recipe as much as I do. Thanks a lot. To see more tips, techniques, and videos, visit HarvestEating.com. Four seasons, one lifestyle.